Vegas, I'm hella excited. We're talking wrestling. I'm here with one of my favorite wrestlers. New Japan Pro Wrestling is in the building tonight. Spirit Unleashed, Fighting Spirit Unleashed, excuse me. Eddie Kingston, Ring of Honor World Champion. New Ooh. Japan Strong, yeah. Open Weight Champion. Eddie, first and foremost, how you doing? I know, man. I'm good, man. Chilling, getting ready to fight tonight. You know what I mean? This is what I live for. So I'm ready. This is the game day. We, we, we get in this special hours before the fight and before we get into wrestling and everything. Um, I have an important set of questions that we're going to start with. First and foremost, how many Giants jerseys do you own? Uh, over the years, like at least 50, 60, but like now maybe three. What was your, really? No, because what, Daniel Jones, Saquon, not rocking with them? No, I'm not Daniel Jones. I got a Saquon, you know what I mean? But not a Daniel Jones. No, I'm not rocking with him. Which one's your most coveted one that you've had over the years? Uh, LT. Lawrence, LT, Lawrence L LT, then Harry Carson. I got and uh, Phil Sims when I was a kid. Phil Sims, yeah. our Odyssey brother. Well, listen, I got a gift. I've never done this on the interview. <laughs> you know, in radio, they send us books all the time. Hey, do you want yeah. to talk about someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tom Coughlin came out with a book last year, okay. right? He didn't come on the show. Because he didn't come on the show, I didn't read this. And why do I need to have this at my house? Nah, you don't. Listen, bro, you on Thank the road. You, bro. Thank a giant you. win. I appreciate it, dog. We'll put it to the camera, baby. <laughs> Whatever. I love it. Tom Coughlin, come on the show now. That was a free Now plug. you got to come on, Tommy. Um, you know I mean? Thank you, though. I appreciate yo, it. Yo, of course. Now, how do you feel about Derek Jeter? Uh, I know a lot of people hate on Derek Jeter because, you know. A compiler overrated? Yeah. No, you know what? <laughs> Y'all can say he's overrated, and I can kind of go with that. But my man played big time when it was time to play big. You know what I mean? Which no one else did. You know what I mean? When we needed the big hit, who did it? Jeter. When we needed the big defensive play, who did it? Jeter. That's why he's a Hall of Famer, because he was a primetime player if you want to bring him back old school. You know what I mean? Everyone else with all the better stats and better fielding and all that, they couldn't handle the pressure that Jeter had to deal with. That's my man. That's why he's my man. You hear that, No more Garcia Parra? Shots directed at you. No, there's no shots. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Did he make a big play against the A's? Did he dive into the stands to make a play? Did he get a big base hit when they needed him to? The Not rings. all the time. Or the, the rings. rings, yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just stating facts. No, this is this is very true. And then um, I do want to talk to you about Madden because uh, you went on Swerve Strickland's podcast. Yeah. This is like a year. This was a long time ago. And what I wasn't expected was for you to go after EA because of Mutt, an ultimate so, team. But why? Like, I get it. I know why they're doing it, to make money. For the money. Yeah, but the franchise. It's fun, though. Yeah. No, nah, the franchise is fucked. You know what I mean? Like. I grew up, I'm older, I grew up when the franchise was a big deal. And they had all this stuff with the create your own team, create your own play. Tony Bruno. Yeah, yeah, the, the Tony Bruno radio, all that stuff. And then like, they were in depth with it. And now it's just the same franchise every year, so I'm not going to buy it. So what, you're on three years of not buying it? Yeah, I'm just not going to buy it. I'm over it. I'm that's, done. Yo, that's, that's crazy. I, I bought the other day. I bought. I played the other day because I have an old PlayStation. Uh, Madden 08. And that franchise blows away any franchise that they've had in years. Was that Brett Favre on the cover of Vince Young? No, Vince Young. Vince, Vince Young, Young on that with one. the Titans yeah. jersey. Oh, cool. they had all that stuff. I can go on forever about it, man. <laughs> like, Madden broke my heart, dog. Broke my heart. I'm one of the original Madden players, B. I'm talking about Sega Genesis shit. You know what I'm saying? So... I'm just saying. Oh, EA. Before, before the EA, before you could even get the, the the players' names, only the numbers. I was playing it. So this is very. Th I can't deny the thoroughness on that. You know, especially and then in the NCAA football too. I used to play. Uh, I've been from the beginning. Bill Walsh's NCAA football. That's what and I you were about. dynasty mode recruiting, yeah, doing all that two star, all that. three star, I four star. That. Yeah, yeah. Notre Dame sucked every time I played because I played it on hard. But you know, sometimes when I wanted to cheat. Put it down to rookie, get a big win <laughs> against Michigan or USC. Get a far style recruit one yeah, time. Yeah, one get time, one time, yeah. And then be like, this guy's going to lead me. I'm going to play it on Heisman every time. So, nah, never won. <laughs> Are you ready to get into some wrestling? Yeah, please, yeah. So, the one thing I want to ask you is because I am one of these people. Good sir, until AEW existed, I didn't know, and I saw you on television. The rest is history. You've been grinding at this, what is this, 18 years before AEW, correct? Yeah, 18 years. Yeah, 22 now. It's been 22 years, but 18 Salute at AEW. Thank you. How does that feel to have, like, this 
I know your story of getting to AEW and like this is this is ridiculous, but like yeah. having all these fans like in year eighteen, like just how does that feel? Is it it's weird, weird to you? Weird as shit. <laughs> weird as shit. Cause like I I don't know, man. I I tell my girl this because she's like, why is it weird? And I try to explain to, her. like I'm not anything different. I'm not a superstar. I don't feel like it, and I'm not like just some movie star or something. I'm just me. So when people come up to me and tell me like, oh, I'm a big fan or what you said had an effect on me, or, what you do has an effect on me, I'm just kind of like, nah, why? You know what I mean? Like, I look at people like Malcolm X or Martin Luther King and I'm like, look at them, don't look at me. I'm just a pro wrestler, you know? I'm just and, doing what I love. Yeah, and I've been wanting to do this since I was nine years old. So to me, I'm just living the world, the, I'm living the dream I wanted to live. And it's just, I'm not putting people down when they come up to me. It's just, it's weird for me. You know, I, I get real bashful about it. And I'm like, oh, hey, yeah. Or when they're like, oh, picture. I'm like, yeah, sure, okay. Like, because I don't see myself as a big deal. It's not, it's not a big deal. I just, if I inspire someone awesome, it still feels weird, though. You know? Well, I do. You, you talk about inspiration. The other thing that, that I, I'm like, I'm, I'm so happy. You just did a video a couple weeks or a couple days ago that just came out, you know, talking about mental health, yeah. talking about, you know, suicide and those thoughts. Of course, a year ago, two years ago, the Players' Tribune article was yeah. another big thing. And whether it's the Players' Tribune article in interviews, you talk about this and it's not easy for anyone to talk about, yeah, let not. alone a professional athlete, a professional wrestler who's over here. I want to win. the, I want to be the champ and I want to whoop everyone's ass. Yeah. For you, you're like, no, I'm, I'm trying to, these are my thoughts, and I know other people are feeling them too. Where do you, why is it so important for you to talk about these things out loud to people, I guess? Because uh, I've lost a lot of friends, you know what I mean, who didn't talk about it, who hit it, and uh, a couple of friends committed suicide. A couple of friends went on a, went on a little run and got killed by others, you know what I mean, because they didn't talk about it. And I look at my family and like a lot of my family members, man, went through it, you know, and, and, and didn't deal with it until later on in their life, you know, until they would, they didn't fit, you never figure it out, but they didn't start trying to work on themselves until they were in their like late forties, early fifties, you know, and I seen them struggle when they were in their twenties and thirties, my uncles, you know? And it's just like, well, let's talk about it. Let's do something different now. Yeah. Because for years we didn't talk about it. And guess what? It didn't fucking work. People still died. People still committed suicide. So how about we start talking about it? And to me, if one person, only one, all it takes is one. If one person, because they hear me or they hear someone else talk about their mental health and they're like, oh, shit, I'm not alone, because you're not, and it helps them move on in their life, then that's all that matters. You know what I mean? I'm not doing this to be the advocate for mental health or whatever. No, I'm just doing it because to me it's right. Because you're a human yeah. being and this is and what we I guess, do. I guess, and if it, it, you know what I mean? To me it's a right thing to do. You know, I try to do right things. It's hard sometimes. You know, when doing bad is much easier, trust me. But I try to do the right thing, man. And to me, this feels right. You and know I, what I mean? And for this next question, I apologize if it's too personal. But no, no, me, no. I did. I started therapy last year. Nice. Do you go to therapy or? Uh, no, I, I haven't gone back to therapy in about a year, but I'm I'm always planning on it. You know what I mean? And I also have a real good support system, and my support system they'll let me know if like yo Eddie, go back to therapy. You know what I mean? Or they'll they'll tell me like oh we can't can't help you on this. You need a professional. Yeah. And I'll do well, it. Well, that's my problem. I've yeah. been to like six of them. Sometimes they're too old. I was like, you don't relate to me. <laughs> you haven't listened to the same music, grew up the same way. Like, yeah, how can I, you end this? I, Isn't I, that hard? You no, know, for me, it's hard. I'm not looking for answers. You know what I mean? I'm not looking for them to fix me, per se, because I don't think nothing's wrong. Yeah. It's just I'm looking for a way to handle things correctly. I'm not looking for a fix because I'm never going to be fixed. That's this is a battle that I'm going to have to deal with for the rest of my life. I'm just looking for better ways of handling it. You know what I'm saying? When people try, to me, when people say, oh, I'm just trying to get fixed, I, fixed for what? Ain't nothing wrong with you. This is life. Everybody's different, dog. You know what I mean? And like, I hate the word normal. I hate that word. Because my normal's not the same as yours. Yeah. Or, or the next person or that. We make our own normal. You know what I mean? So to me, when I go through my 
depression or when I start, you know, getting a little bit on edge, that's my normal. It may not be the next man's, but that's mine. And, and that's fine. You know what I mean? There's nothing to fix. I just need to learn ways of handling it better. And that's what I tell people. Like, therapy's not about fixing because you ain't, there ain't nothing wrong with you. You ain't broken. You just got to find a way to handle it better than the next man. And that's it. And, and listen, I want to thank you right now because, like, that to me personally, that's like one of the hardest things. Viewing it of like fixed or problem, it's kind of like you want to be the best wrestler. Yeah. I want to be the best interviewer, be the best person in radio. If there's ever a day where I think something's fixed or complete, it's a wrap. Yeah. Because it's not, because this shit continues. Yep. And every day there's something to add on oh, to it. Oh, there's something new every day, man. Like, every day there's something new. You know what I mean? And that's just, that's life, dog. That's life. You know, and. I just said, I just feel like it's it's good to talk about it now. Like I said, we didn't talk about it for years and we lost a lot of people. You know what I mean? I did. I know uh, other people have as well. It's about time to switch it up now. Let's try a new way. If this don't work, all right, then. Do it a different way then after that. I don't know. And I know you just told me, you know, you're uncomfortable with getting praise. I hate it, man, because I just don't feel like... But look, I let me just... I, I need, I need to go through the catalog real quick. Yeah. Main event at AEW, pay-per-views... All out, 80,000, 70,000, whatever the number is, right? The moments that you've had, the love, the new fandom, Grand Slam, winning in your city, yeah. family there, finally winning that world championship. Yeah. Were you able to take a moment to take all that in? Or is this like, no, I can't think about this now because I'm doing what I'm doing? Uh, I, I, do, I usually take these moments in when I'm in the hotel by myself. And like, I'll take it in for a little bit. But then my brain is like, all right, on to the next thing. We got to hurry up. We got, I got this other thing to do. I got to keep going. I got to do something at work or something. Something just clicks in my head. But I do take time, whether it's an hour after when I'm in the hotel room or two hours, three hours. I take time to sit back and go, all right, this ain't, this ain't bad. You did it in your city, yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> this ain't, this ain't, this ain't bad. You know what I mean? Like, this is, this is pretty cool. But then, you know. I get on it like, I got a show Saturday, or I got a show next Wednesday, or I got to do New Japan, you know? Like, when I did the G1, I actually enjoyed it. But then when it, when it was finally over, I was like, all right, when am I getting back? <laughs> you know what I mean? But I did enjoy it while I was there. I made sure I did that. When you, when you talk about becoming world champion, you know, for the longest time, a lot of conversation online is, well... Vince McMahon wants bodybuilders. That's good for him. You gotta look a certain way. And if you're if you look like Kevin Steen, if you look like you, these people are never gonna be world champions. No. In your career, was there ever moments where that noise became loud in your head? No. No, because I was actually around. What up, Kevo? Big shout out to Steen. I was around guys like that. You know what I mean? There was a lot of dudes like that around. And no, that never bothered me because they don't know the work that I put in. They don't know that I go to the gym. They don't know that I do Muay Thai. They don't know that I do Jiu Jitsu. You know what I mean? They don't need to know. That's not their business. You know what I mean? But like, they don't know the work I put in and the hours I spend, you know, getting ready to get in the ring. You know, they don't know. Yeah, look, my belly's a little bit bigger, bro. I like ice cream. I like five guys. I like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I saw a McDonald's. I saw a McDonald's over here. I like to eat. You know what I mean? But like, I still work out, I still bust my ass, I still go 110% in that ring, even if I can't go. Even if my body's fucking turning on me, I still go 110 and give what I got. So all the people that say that stuff, they don't know me. They don't know the work. So of course they're gonna say stuff because all they see is surface. They don't see anything deeper, so I let them be. And then I also kind of believe it like, a lot of the people that say stuff never been in the ring and never done it. So you, okay, your opinion, opinions are like assholes, man. Everyone got one and they all stink. That's what my mother used to say. Now, when the boys start knocking you and saying stuff, that gets under my skin a little bit, but then I kind of go, well, they ain't going to say it to my face, so fuck them. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's the way... That's the way I look at it. Because you if know? they cared, they would have went to you and took you to the side and be like, hey, yeah, boy, good? Either, either that or... Or if they wanted to really confront me on some shit and if they were really mad that I'm getting opportunities and I don't look like a bodybuilder, if they had a problem with it, confront me. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean we're going to throw hands, but let's have a conversation then. Yeah, because if you have an you issue, know? that's how we do it. Let's just knock it out the way then. You know what I mean? But it is what it is. And to me, 
Mox told me this a while ago. He said, if you're not having haters by now in your career being on TV, then you're not doing a good job. And I'm like, nah, you're right. And no one yeah. can take any of this away from me, haters or whoever. Yeah, I don't look like the typical wrestler. I ain't got six pack. I don't have these huge ass muscles, you know what I mean? But the bottom line is you can't take away what I've done and what I'm going to do. So sit there and hate all day, bro, do you. Watch something else then. I don't care, watch wrestling. Just watch pro wrestling, I don't care. I don't care what kind of pro wrestling it is, just watch it. And look, they can have all those things you just mentioned, but they, very few are gonna make you feel the way this guy makes ah. you feel when you're watching them. I just, I, I try. I, I know, I know, and you see how weird I get real quick? <laughs> well look, it's gonna get a little weirder. This is a little controversial, but I'm gonna ask it. And I asked this to Swerve Strickland before Wrestle Dream. Yep. And this is me not trying to be a journalist. This is me being an AEW fan. There has been events that I've watched and went, holy shit, I've never seen anything like this. Like All Out. Of course, CM Punk had a few issues backstage. He's not the only one, though. Yeah, we There's all There's been do. plenty of issues, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to me as a fan, I get so upset because let's take All Out, for example. All of the conversation was these incidents backstage yeah. and not what I just saw. For instance, the uh, the All In here in Vegas two years ago where you almost lit someone on fire. Yeah, I wish I a, did. I we was need so to talk mad. about that moment and we will in a I'm second. I'm so mad that Brian stopped me. I was so mad. But as, and I don't want you to speak for the locker room, I, I'm just going to ask you direct. Does that bother you that the conversation isn't on, that it's on the drama and not on the things that you guys are doing in the ring? Nah. It don't bother me because I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, I have a job to do. And my job is to make the people talk about us. And if I didn't do a good enough job where they want to talk about backstage stuff, then that's on me. I'll just do better next time. You know what I mean? And like I said in the interview before, there was no locker room divide like it was reported. Because I don't really hang out with a lot of people. I have like four or five people I chill with in the locker room. And... I, those four or five people didn't, didn't give a shit what was going on. You know, we were in our own world, so we had to go to work, and that's it. But, you know, people are going to talk about the drama because people love drama, man. That's why we have those kind of movies and all that. You know what I mean? They love it. But it's our job to go out there and, and produce to make them forget that. And I think we are, but if people still want to talk about it, that's on them, not on me, you know? Since I did bring up CM Punk's name, I do want to ask you one more question. So when he left AEW and everything that happened and he's no longer with the company, your promo against him went viral. Of course, you said, hey, people don't, uh, you, you, people didn't want you here. You're not liked in the locker room. And everyone pointed to that and been like, see, there it is. Eddie telling the truth again. Do you feel bad that that moment was brought up again? And you're like, no, no. I'm doing my job. No, I'm doing my job. Then that's how I felt. You know what I mean? I didn't know what anyone else in the locker room felt. I didn't care. It's how I felt. I didn't want him there. You know what I mean? Me and Punk don't like each other, and that's fine. You're not going to like everybody you work with. You know what I mean? Do I wish he was still in AEW and I wish it worked out differently? Yeah, because he helped the company. But other than that, I don't give a fuck what he does. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because me and him never got along anyway. You know? This, and it don't concern you. We no, don't have to be best don't, friends. That's not, no, we don't have to be job. best friends to fight each other. It makes it better when we're not best friends. You know, when we have to fight each other. I don't wish him bad, but I don't wish him good either because I don't give a fuck. <laughs> that's it. No, that's true. And uh, one thing I do want to ask you, too, is a couple weeks ago, Sean, Ress, uh, Sean Ross Sapp posted something. Picture of you, Ricky, Chelsea Green, L.A. Knight. Crazy how you guys were all at N.W.A. at one time. <laughs> yeah. Wow, and you guys are all that. really honestly killing it. Like, Thank you. First off, L.A. Knight, you're not from New York. Only he's allowed to wear the Tims. <laughs> no, no, no. I like L.A. Knight, bro. <laughs> I, like, I, I like my man. He's a good dude. He's allowed to. I let him. Did you ever have lugs because of Funk Flex? No, never. You never, never had, had lugs? lugs? Never. It was always Tims. It was you, always Tims. People would clown on you if you had lugs. Was that the thing? I was too young. No, to me, to me, lugs wasn't. It was all about the Tims, bro. We listened to Wu-Tang, Mob Deep, all them. They weren't talking about lugs. They were talking about Tims, man. I did listen to Tribe Life before I came in here because I, nice. I needed to get into Tribe Life. That that, that's my jam. I love, most, that's my uh, that's favorite. a deep cut. That's my favorite Mob Deep song, Tribe Life off the Infamous album. That's my favorite song. You know how many that's people don't know that J. Cole used that for one of his songs? Wait, like, that's the J. Cole song. I was ah, like, nah, son. That's when you know you're getting old when they start telling you. Rest in peace to Prodigy. Yeah, man. Back to the, the question. Yo, top 10 all-time Prodigy, for real. 
for real. For Can real. I get your Mount Rushmore? Damn. Uh, number for me personally, Pac is number one because he spoke to me as a kid. You know, with things. He just found this killer. He lived about 15 minutes. I know. I heard, yeah. <laughs> I'll take I was you like, to the house. I went like this. I said, of course. Now they find it, right? <laughs> I said, of course they did. Uh, for me, it's like Pac, Rakim, uh, Nas, and uh, I got to go with uh, DMX because that's my man from Yonkin. Rest in peace that's, again. Yeah. My man for me, he spoke to me, bro. I, he had me barking like a madman in 98 <laughs> on the 20 bus at school, just Hurrah! Barking all day as they played it on the boombox, you know? Yeah, I'm dating myself on the boombox, bro. That is legendary. Back to that photo really quick, though. Is it cool to see where you guys are all at right now? Nah, man, of course. Of course, bro. I'm so happy for LA night, you know what I mean? That dude busts his ass, man. We all did. We all did, you know what I mean? So to see him getting the love that he's getting and, and, and being able to perform on that big stage, I give, I salute him. Ricky Starks is a little bit of a bitch. He knows that, but... You know, I'm proud of him too. I, I just I don't like the way he's acting, hey. but but we could we're cool in the sense of I could call him a bitch and he ain't gonna try to fight me. You know what I mean? And you don't have to like everybody. Exactly, we exactly, exactly. But at that time in NWA, I gotta give him mad love because it was just so much fun and the atmosphere back. Th I don't know how it is now. It's probably still the same. I gotta ask homicide. We don't talk about wrestling really. We just talk about life. But when I call Homicide up, I'll ask him next time, yo, how is it? Is it like it was back then? Because back then, man, it was just so much fun. It was like, the, me, hom having Homicide there is always great. Because he always keeps me calm, believe it or That's not. That's your mentor, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so he knows how to talk to me and keep me, you know, yeah, yeah. calm like Rocky Romero does here. They know how to talk to me and, like, get my mind clicking where it's like, Eddie, don't do this. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Uh, not many people can do that. But... We had us, we had L.A. Knight, like you said, you know what I mean, Trevor Murdoch, uh, uh, Ricky Chelsea, was there, Chelsea, Chelsea Thunder Rosa, uh, Allison K, my French Vanilla, that's a nickname, Marty Bell was there, like, we had a bunch, and I'm, I know I'm missing other people, the Dawsons, like, I'm missing a lot of other, and I don't mean no disrespect, but like, it's a lot of names, it's a lot of names, and it was a lot of fun, you know what I mean, and then, you know, pandemic hit and we all had to make money somehow. You know what I mean? And, you know, I didn't want to leave NWA, but it was either Circumstances. stay broke or make money. And I had to make money. You know what I mean? I had to live. I didn't want to move back in with my mother at 38 at the time, you know? That's real life stuff. We're closing out with these two. First and foremost, Eddie, my baby mama's from Peaksill, New York. <laughs> I make fun of her all the time. I say, you're not from a borough. You're not from New York City. Stop saying that. Take off that Yankee jersey. Nah. nah is that a part of New York City, yes or no? Not the city part, no. Neither is Yonkers, though. Yonkers so then what is outside say, the borough. Yeah, they can say from Jadakiss, you. NX, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Tommy Dreamer. What up, Tommy? <laughs> you know? And we're right near the Bronx, bro. We might as well be the 6th. <laughs> we used to beef back in the day. Like, legit fights in the schoolyard over Yonkers and Bronx being, like, a borough and not. It's dumbest things we get into fights. At, like, physical fights. Like, stick stickball bats being hit at each other. You know what I mean? Over now, nah, Yonkers ain't New York. It's the weirdest thing. Anyway, it's New York, but it ain't the city part. You got to give them love. You got to give them that kind of respect. It's New York. They have the same tap water. You know what I mean? So you got to give them that. But if they say New York City, that's when you go, no, no, no. Do you see the way he was not He's the like, city. you can't say the city. Not the you city part. Then we'll close out with this last question. It doesn't even have to be wrestling. Eli Manning, is he a Hall of Famer? Only, I swear I just had this conversation before coming here with Royce Isaac. He doesn't have the stats, but the reason why he's a Hall of Famer is he got the two Super Bowl rings and the two Super Bowl MVPs. One of them, granted, you could have gave it to the defense, but he still has two Super Bowl MVPs. Versus the team that all of America wanted to lose, which was the Patriots. Yeah, they did. Especially in 2007 when they came in there with Randy it's Moss and were Oh, undefeated. dude, it was so aggravating seeing them win every week and knowing how great they were. You know what I mean? But when they won that game, I, lo I, I don't even remember the night because I lost it. I just was, like, so happy. I, I don't remember the last time I was that. Well, what was probably the Grand feeling? Slam. Winning the ring, Grand Slam or no, the Super Grand, Bowl? No, Grand Slam. Beating up Claudio is always so much fun. I mean, that was yeah, I mean, nah, he, in the making. Yeah, Claudio's a bitch. He's been a bitch and always will be a bitch. You know what I mean? He could be the greatest wrestler in the world, but at the end of the day, inside, he's a bitch. That's all I'm going to say. Eddie, I want to thank you for the time. Nah, and thank man, you thank for the you. entertainment, man. Thank you for Appreciate the book. You.
Appreciate it, man. Mad love. Thank you. Eddie Kingston, baby.